so welcome to the Barbican Conservatory, which is definitely one of the best free things to do in London, in my opinion. I absolutely love this and I can't believe that the tickets are completely free. All you have to do is go online and book them in advance. So the Barbican Conservatory is a huge indoor rainforest located in the heart of the city and it's actually the second biggest conservatory in London, only following Kew Gardens Princess of Wales Conservatory. Unlike the Sky Gardens, which I felt was a bit cold in the cooler months, this place was really hot and I love this little cute Robin that must have got in. I hope he can find enough stuff to eat in here. As a huge plant lover myself, I recognise quite a few of the plants in here. So this one is a staghorn fern and these are very interesting. They're very popular at the moment and a lot of people actually grow them from plaques on their walls in the home. It's an epiphytic plant, which means it grows on other plants or objects, but it's not parasitic. The name comes from its resemblance to deer antlers. So the story of how this conservatory got going is very bizarre. Apparently it was initially designed to cover the massive fly tower through which scenery for the Barbican Theatre below is lowered. Um, it started off with somebody just putting a few pot plants there and it has grown completely out of control obviously now and it now hosts 1,500 species of plants and trees, some of them which are actually rare and endangered in their native habitat. So I have got some footage of the rest of the building because the Barbican itself is a very unusual style of architecture. It's called brutalism and it's these huge concrete blocks essentially and it's a real juxtaposition to have the central column with all this concrete and then these beautiful lush green plants. So the conservatory is split into two sides. There's an east side and a west side and then at the bottom you have this beautiful pond with these huge koi carts in. So the west side is inhabited by more shade loving plants. So there's less flowering ones on that side. Then on the east side, which gets a lot more sunlight during the day, it has plants that can flower all year round. So here's an avocado tree. An interesting fact is there's actually a huge avocado tree somewhere in South London that actually gets avocados on it and gets a good crop each year. Construction of the Barbican estate actually started in 1965 and it took 11 years to complete. So this conservatory has probably been around for around 40 years and look at the size of some of these monstera leaves. I think some of these leaves are half the size of me. So the conservatory is mostly reserved for the residents that live here because not only is there a theatre and lots of things to do in the Barbican, but it is also home to a large number of residents. So it's only open to the public on limited days. I believe this is a Norfolk pine. I actually have one of these at home, nothing like as big as this because they do make alternative Christmas trees that you can keep all year round. This space over here is dedicated to donations, uh, plant donations that are given to the conservatory. I loved this huge variegated monstera. These guys were worth quite a bit not long ago. So the Barbican itself was actually described by Queen Elizabeth as one of the modern wonders of the world and it's actually one of the largest examples of the brutalist style. It is designed to represent a utopian ideal for inner city living. It was first designed in the 1950s by a British firm Chamberlain Powell and Bonn although it didn't end up being started until 1965 and construction of this place actually took a whopping 11 years. 
brutalism as a style is either loved or hated it's like marmite but it's characterized by raw exposed concrete and bold geometric forms it was particularly popular around the 1950s to the 1970s So these metal sculptures you can see are actually part of an exhibition by Ranjani Shetta. The series is called Cloud Songs and to come up with these concepts she gets them from meditation. They are then hand sculpted in her studio in rural India. So you can also go upstairs where you'll find the arid house or the cactus house, which I think was actually my favourite part of the whole conservatory. I loved it. And on the way, you're also going to see some little terrapins. These little trouble causers were actually moved here from Hampstead Heath because they were terrorising the other wildlife. As cute as they look, they actually have quite a mean streak.
So after the conservatory, definitely take a bit of time to have a look around the whole of the Barbican Centre. There's some really cool stuff to see. So there's quite a few cafes and restaurants and the food actually is quite healthy and nice. Here you can see a small scale model of the whole of the Barbican estate and you just get an idea of just how huge this building actually is. As well as being a theatre, a conservatory, a cocktail bar, there's a few restaurants and lots of other stuff going on. There's actually over 2000 flats and masonettes in the estate as well. The Barbican has two gift shops, there's one upstairs and one downstairs. There's actually some really cute stuff. There was a foraging book that I actually really wanted and I loved this butterfly teacup. I thought they were really cute. They also had a lot of very unusual items in here and they definitely seem to have a bit of a push on feminism. Mother effing girl power, can't say that. I really loved these flamingo candles. They were very cool. Then in the downstairs shop, they had quite a lot of brutal merch. Look at the brutal candle. This is so cool. Oh yeah, that, that's the best gift here. <laughs> for sure, I'll buy that. It's from Toxic. I definitely recommend going and having a look at the flats and accommodation and there's also some skywalks where you can walk and see the city from above and get to see the brutal style on this very brutal day because it was very cold and raining when I went so the weather perfectly matched the style of architecture with the weather being just as brutal as the building. So there were a number of ponds around the Barbican and some of them had these really cute seating areas where you could be below the water level. I think they would be fantastic in the summer. You can just see them here. Before you leave, be sure to check out the Martini Bar on the first floor. Not only does it offer absolutely stunning views of the lakeside, but they have some of London's finest martini cocktails. So it was actually created in 2012 to cater to the martini drinkers who were visiting the 007 exhibition, but it's stayed ever since. 